welcome to the NBS Show, episode number 185. I'm your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is James. Hello, everybody. How are you guys doing today? Fine, fine. And also joining us is Ro. Praise the sun! Praise it be. So, how are you guys doing, man? Slowly but surely, slowly but surely. It's been a crazy week for commissions. It's really crazy. In one week, I managed to cover the entire month's bills. Wow. Awesome. Yep. That's awesome to know, dude. I finally is... managed to cover my bills on my own. <laughs> I haven't managed to cover a single bill on my own in four months. My parents had help. I can't imagine it's what very, song I'd be singing it's right really now neat. if it wasn't my parents. It's really neat when you can actually start paying your own bills and you're part of the, you're part of the house and everything. It, it is awesome. It is a good feeling. Yep, yep. So how about you, James? Uh, well, I am backgrounding at the moment. Ah. Backgrounding. Yes, it, well, silly terms aside, I'm doing the background for a movie slate commission. Mm, cool, cool. I have all of the month of Halloween booked for movie slate, and every update that is going to go up on that blog in a couple of weeks, or when this comes out, or whenever, it's going to be commissioned. So I hope that you guys enjoy it. I'm sure I'm having fun drawing this. Yay. So, well, I guess you can say it's one of these shows, again, where we just don't have a guest and we're just having fun. <laughs> Nobody comes here because they don't like the way we smell. Not really. Ew, it smells like nerd and Spanish. We don't <laughs> like it. I don't think so. People do. Norman, get rid of the guy with the funny accent. Which one? All of them. <laughs> you too. <laughs> oh, wow. The me show done by minds. NBS show, nothing addition. And it's the uh, the end of the show. Goodbye. Oh you <laughs> No, we're not gonna go there. Uh but anyway, we're still gonna have a show. We have news to cover, so that's fun. But before I start off with the news, I need to ask you guys, how was your week? Like I said, crazy with commissions, been doing nothing but drawing commissions. Dolls, characters, icons and banners. It was fun. You were doing a puppet for our friend Sugardov on her upcoming review show, weren't you? Yep. That was yeah. quite an interesting project. Yes, that's going to be super cool when it comes out. You guys are going to love it. Also, if I'm not mistaken, you got a chance to stream with the Fluff Mike himself, yep. right? Mixer Mike himself, greater Fluff Puff. Nice. We just popped into my stream one day. I was streaming with Mad Munchkin and was like, I'm looking for company. He was like, okay, you can hang out with us if you want to. And so we did. In wow. the meantime, you were trying not to piss your pants out of excitement. Oh my god, he's fluffing puppies in my stream! Well, <laughs> well, that was Maddie's part. I was like, at one, in the beginning of times when I first started following Fall Puff, it was like, oh my god, I hope Senpai notices me one day. And I'm like, I'm playing with the big boys now. There's nothing new. This guy is just an average person who's also like, like to do stuff. I'm already at the level where I'm level headed, so to speak. Oh, uh, well, I, I think it's something that last week happened. Um, what was it? We had, Hyper Mark, where yes, Hyper Mark. Senpai noticed you, and he's not Senpai anymore. Aye, <laughs> game of Senpai. Oh, yeah. Senpai, oh, Senpai, 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 oh, Senpai, wow. Senpai. More backstabbing involved than you may imagine. Oh wow! <laughs> Since when we're discussing Sundara Simulator? Ah <laughs> oh, God, no! Please tell me there's. Is there a game called? Yes, that? there is. Yeah, well, you don't you know that. Been, that thing's been all oh, over the internet. Oh my God. And they I say I can live show rock. you the world. I don't need to. <laughs> I don't need to. It's literally one of the gaudiest video games ever released in the past few months. Oh, well, right now. Not as much as Postal 2, but... It's, no, the, 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 the Sundera simulator is absolutely ridiculous. It's pretty, it, it, it is more fun to see it being played than to play yourself. I, I can tell you. Right now yeah. I'm rocking Danganronpa Ultra Dispergal and... Metal Gear Solid 5, The Phantom Pain, and also Until Dawn. Those are the three I'm watching right now. <laughs> no, what about, what about Undertale, Evertale, oh, goodness Something gracious. Tale? What's that? What is the name of, Undertale, is Undertale? What's that? Yeah. Undertale. It's a, it's an RPG that is making the rounds lately. It's like old school 8-bit kind of graphics, mm -hmm. and everybody under mother is in love with that game. It's ridiculous. It has. It, it's not just a fan following. There is a cult for that game. I don't know, man. Like... It's 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 it's. And I have no idea what it is about. All I know is that you can do a pacifist run of the game and not fight a single fight. 
Like, you can literally just do a pacifist run and just defend yourself. Hmm. Well, I don't know. I haven't heard of it. So maybe I just need to wait and see if my circle of YouTubers played it or not. Just have to wait and see. But talking about video games, right? Something exciting came up. You guys remember last a few episodes ago we mentioned about them fighting herds? Ah, oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. The, the, what used to be fighting is magic that was uh, re, reinvent, reinvented and turned into an actual uh, equine four-legged character <laughs> fighting game. Yep, yep. Well, they started their Indiegogo campaign and, well... <laughs> How about I can, what, what can I say? They're killing strong. Like, they have their crowdfunding done at, uh, 39%. So, that's awesome. That is fantastic. And if you guys check out their Indiegogo page in the show notes, they're at, let's see, 171,000 American dollars out of their $436 that they want. From what I see, they're really doing a lot of awesome things. Like, they are, ready to dish it out like the game is still in alpha and a lot of things are needed to make it finish but there are a lot of good things out for this game and well if you check out the them fighting hurts lore uh read by lauren faust it's really fun <laughs> my friend uh compared it to mortal kombat with horses mortal kombat with horses i wonder why said that the, the, the plot of the game is very similar to mortal kombat Ah. So, you know what? I find it really interesting that we are talking about this uh, within this fandom, mm-hmm. but it's we are talking about it by proxy mm-hmm. because True. it's been done by Lauren Faust, mm-hmm. who came up with the idea of Friendship is Magic to begin with, and it's done by a team that got CND by Hasbro. Mm-hmm. If these things didn't happen, this would completely be flying under a radar. We wouldn't even be talking about well, it. Kind of. I mean... Honestly speaking, Them Fighting Hurts is a project that was started off by something negative, getting a C and D by Hasbro, and turning out to be something amazing because, well, <laughs> this is one of those situations where uh, a silver lining in the clouds, something like that. What was it? How does the frisk go? Like, a silver lining in the clouds? I think it's something like that. They have never used that expression, so I wouldn't be able to tell you, but... I think Hasbro should make a, they should make balance of what they did. Um, because I think they were very, very short-sighted as per usual. Uh, just think about it for a minute. Instead of letting these people complete a video game that was going to be put out there for free, nobody was going to pay for it because it was a fun project. And nobody was going to gain profit from it and they were not going to sell it or market it. They see indeed, and now these guys are reinventing it, creating their own IP, and they're gonna put it on sale. And I don't, I don't say that they are going to make the competence for Hasbro, but, but these guys are putting together something that could very well be put, uh, put on Steam. Well, they're gonna put it on Steam. They're gonna put it on the PS Network, right, and on Xbox on the uh, on the Xbox Marketplace, right? For now, I'm not sure about consoles, but they are going to put it on the. PC and on Steam and right no, funny that you mentioned that James that, uh, right now the game is live for greenlit on Steam so if you guys have Steam go greenlight the project because that will help well show interest and the game will be on Steam so yay so basically this means that this team has put together something that is eventually going to make money Indeed. Hasbro 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 should have gone to these guys and said you, stop that. Now, when we tell you to go, go. And we're going to sell it together. Or we're going to sell it and you're going to get like 2% of the profit. Mm. And we get the rest because it's our IP. Like something, hire these people. Don't just put a lawyer on it and just stop it. Same thing happened with Button Mash. They could have taken, they could have taken Shady and, and Jan animations and put them on Hasbro's payroll. Even if it's just for, even if it was just for misery or not even put them on a payroll, put them on an apprenticeship and bring them in. No. We have to see in the end. And then we're gonna go to our lair of doom to destroy letters from little girls. <laughs> oh, you. Oh, you. Uh, what? Too the... soon? Too soon and so. <laughs> So evil. That's not right. That's not right. 
Is what, that a reference to some Has, movie? Hasbro is said. No, I just I was just being myself. Be scared. That's how I am. Hasbro is a corporation. Corporation in this world, in this uh, society driven by capitalism, they are inherently not good. They are not bad either. They are neutral. And that's mm-hmm. probably the scariest thing, is that their neutrality allows them to get away with almost anything. Because to them, it doesn't matter who is in the power. To them, it doesn't matter who is buying their products, as long as people buy it. True, they true. Cannot, they, they can afford to have no morality. And so they can afford to get away with a lot of things. Yeah, that's the thing. And also, why I don't see Hasbro asking the main six to build the fighting game was, well, it clashes with their product image. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah they, they, it also clashes with their stupidity and inherent, <laughs> inherent numptiness. They are so, they are so short-sighted. That's my only criticism to the to to the way Hasbro handled it. It's like, okay, fine, protect your IP. You know you can protect your IP by all, by also purchasing what these guys are doing, right? The thing is with it, like like I mentioned, it clashes with their product IP, with the vision. Like My Little Pony has always been a product for little girls to play and imagine, not seeing them kicking each oh. other's flanks. No, no, no. You're wrong. You you phrased it incorrectly, Norman. Okay. Bonnie Sackerly Im- invented the toy to be enjoyed by both girls and boys. Well, that's Bonnie, not Hasbro. Bonnie created it like that. Hasbro marketed it differently. Yeah, see? The main point is, the main point is, Hasbro has a set image for how they want My Little Pony to be presented. And Main 6, or Fighting is Magic, presented it in a way that fans wanted. And in the end, Hasbro didn't agree and dropped the hammer. Because of this, we got them fighting hurts. So yay! All the way, all the way back in 2012, Lauren Faust was so happy about this be- this video game coming out, and it wasn't until Hasbro slammed the fist on the table and said, "No, you stop that now." She didn't get involved directly on it. I'm pretty sure she would have been involved immediately, but as soon as they removed the pony thing. They said, yeah, you know what, let's, let's do this. Let's do this! Well, the other thing is, like, this reminds me of a story of, um, the fan-made Resident Evil 2 remake. You remember that? Oh, I have no idea what you're talking about, but please, do uh, go on. HD1? I want to know more. Well, uh, way back when, before Capcom announced their Resident Evil 2 HD remix, a few fans created their own version of the HD remake, and they did a few things, like, upgrade the graphics and whatnot and one thing that they did was you remember how Resident Evil has two parts like this A and this B? Yeah of course because one is for Leon and the other one is for Claire. Mm-hmm. And yeah. uh, if I remember right for the fan made version was a multiplayer where uh, one plays as Leon and one plays as Claire and if they intersect each other at the right time a cutscene will appear. So that's what they're trying to do. And then, suddenly, Capcom announced that Resident Evil 2 HD Remake is coming out, or they're going to do it. So, with that, the team that's making the fan project got CND'd. But that's because Hasbro is stupid. No, 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 no not Hasbro, Capcom. Japanese. So, oh, yeah, I mean, Capcom is, Capcom is stupid and Japanese. No, 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 James, 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 here's the thing. They say that they see indeed they see indeed the team because well legal rights, but they are pulling them in to ask for opinions and counseling. So they are taking their hard work and trying to put it in this game. So they're working together here. This is something new. This is something exciting. No, you know the thing with uh, the thing with uh, video game developer companies, and this goes to every company that is uh, that is doing a game. The smart thing is doing that. The smart thing is, yeah, look, you have to stop doing that, but we like your ideas. So come here, come here, come here. Come here, let us bring you in. We're going to start working on this. Uh, We're going to give you a contract, and you can start working legally. uh, Something like that. I'm not 100% Uh, sure uh, of the story. uh, Who was it? Who was the company? Was it Valve? Valve was the one. You know what? Counter-Strike? 
either Counter Strike. Not Counter Strike, Counter -Strike Portal. There were several game company, indie game companies yes, they hired merged yes, with them yes. in order to like make several titles. Bethesda has done this as well. Bethesda has hired people that have made mods for many video games and have run. They have brought them in to work for them. And this is something that happens more in the Western world than in than in the uh, the than in Japan. Sadly, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's why I made a comment about oh they're they're, they're Japanese. I mean, come on. <laughs> True, they, 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 there is, there is so, yeah, I hope they are changing. Well, at because... least Capcom is, Konami's not. <laughs> oh god, don't even talk That's about that. <laughs> we were all so happy when we were seeing smoke coming out of the building, <laughs> when we realized it was actually steam. Uh, it, no was, it was, it was good for like a couple of minutes, and I was like, oh no, wait a minute, that's not actual smoke. Yeah, it's, it's Kojima, man. He, he in Kojima got so, Kojima should be, should should build his own Metal Gear and go attack <laughs> uh, the, the the Konami building. Oh come on, let's not be mean. Let's not be mean. But uh, uh, Hideo, Hideo Kojima and Guillermo del Toro should join together. They should be Jaeger pilots and then go fight against this, <laughs> the the the, uh, the 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 building of uh, Konami. Yeah. That then turns into another robot, and then you have giant robot fight. Oh, wow. uh, but someone no, needs to, someone needs to make an anime or a manga. Oh, wow. To go back into topic, mm -hmm. when it comes to m developing video games or making animations or writing something and then turning it out there, uh, companies, big companies in particular, they should think about how they are reacting. They should say, is this person making money out of this? No. Let's pass it on. Is, is this person making money out of this? Yes. How much money are they making? They are making this. Is that like less than 10% of what we make annually? Yes. Then let's pass it on. They should be spending more money on hiring more animators to make the, the My Little Pony movie. And, 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 and hire a better director to make a Transformers film. <laughs> I don't know what to say about that one, but no. The thing about this one is like, they have the, they have a really legal right to do so. They need to protect their IP. If not, they lose it. And yeah, I know, but I go with the Jeff Goldblum argument. <laughs> they were so busy thinking about whether they could do it or not that they didn't stop to think if they should. Well, that's corporate. Like we, as people who are diehard fans or people who have interest in the brand, once just wants it out. Like we, we just want product. It doesn't matter how we get it. If it's yeah. from a back of a van in a back alley or in a pristine toy store like Toys R Us or even Target or even Walmart. The you know what? If you're trying to get pony stuff on a back alley, that's not the pony stuff that could be marketed to little girls either. How about? <laughs> but you know what I mean. <laughs> but no, but the point of, the point is that we as fans just want product. We don't really care about where it comes from we, we just want it uh, take the new character what new character what are you talking about the funny herds announced a new character called Tian Tian oh I'm so terrible with names Tian, Tian Daga <laughs> oh no Tian Daga is in the game My I cannot wish. wait to beat, to beat the crap out of him <laughs> yeah I'm terrible with names it's Tian Tianhu or something like that. It's basically a what dragon it? looking like character. The crowdfunding campaign for them fighting her is still trucking along, hitting about 30% of its goal. In celebration, they have revealed a sixth character in their rooster. An update over their game blog has uh, all the relevant information on her. Okay, so it's a girl. Okay, noted, noted. And the news, the game is now available on Greenlight. Go for, go vote for it. Do it. Yay. Do it. Make this game come true. Just... Vote for it. Well, at least now we know how a uh, horse dragon looks like. It's a horse Wait, dragon. Oh. You don't want to know the process of, make, of making that little thing. I, I don't think anyone wants to see very Horse dragon. The, the father was the horse. The, the, the father was the dragon. Ah, mother of Celestia. <laughs> but anyway, imagine mind, pu pushing. Imagine pushing that thing out into the world. No. Oh my god. No. Um. No. Just no. Just, <laughs> just, just no. There are other places. Medic! Medic! But at least this is something cool. Like the sixth character. I bet this is going to play like Rainbow Dash. 
They already announced the, the, the cow that pretty much is Applejack, Applejack right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the ca- uh, Velvet is clearly Rarity. And wasn't one, there was, wasn't there one with a book that was also a Twilight? I don't know. I haven't seen the character yet. Like, I know there's a alpaca that plays like Pinky. And I don't know. There's this unicorn character. Looks like, it could be Twilight, I don't sure. And Pom is a sheep. Looks like Fluttershy. So you know what? This is going to be cool. This is going to be cool. So go and fund it, guys, because I want to play this game. I did my part, so you guys should too. Why we should we do what you're telling us? Because I want to play the game. And I'm a voice on the internet. So it must be something, right? <laughs> but anyway... Should we tell them? Uh, but anyway, like a random voice on the internet. Amy Keating Rogers asked the Twitterverse for naming the character for the two weeks episode. Like, what was it again? Yeah, um, it was it was the Canterlot Boutique episode, the one, and they were talking about. Uh, she was talking about naming those two characters. That uh, one was super excitable and cookie, and the other one was basically Raven from Teen Titans. Yeah, they came up with the names for them. One was Raven Moonlight and the other one was... Sunshine Smiles. Sunshine Smiles, yeah. Yeah, it's Moonlight Raven, by the way. But yeah, Moonlight Raven. Amy Keating Roger says, works for me. So, yay, we got new <laughs> new characters out. Uh, and already they <laughs> got name. Amy is like, works for me, doesn't matter. In a couple of weeks, I'm going to be working for Disney. Oh, no, she's already working for Disney. <laughs> I'm already what? working for Disney. Yeah, she, yeah she's not... She's not, wh- why not? Yeah, why not, Ro? Why not? It's like moving forward. You have no idea how long you, an- you need to work in order uh, to uh, get a spot to working with, let's be honest, one of the biggest, if not the biggest animation studio in the planet. Well, technically, she's working stuff for them. So she's on stuff. With Hasbro, she's working contract. It's even better. Mm-hmm. That means that you have more stability, you have more stable job. Um, No pun intended on the horses. <laughs> And, and it, it, you, don't, you, you don't have to work freelance, which is the way that Hasbro works with the writers. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, well, with this, like, well, Amy's moving on. So, well, we wish her luck. She deserves it. And, well, at least she's still interacting with the fans in terms of ponies. She doesn't have to, but she does. So that's cool. I cannot wait to see the show that she's going to be working on next. I really cannot wait. She wrote some of the best episodes on this uh, on this series. It's really exciting. Well, I want to see her work Marvel. Oh, no, yes. Yes, that will be great. Probably not, but hey, like I want to see. Disney Marvel, it it's like one step ahead next to the other. Oh, work or working on Star Wars. Mm, mm, oh, 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 can you imagine that Amy Gideon Rogers writing on Star Wars? <laughs> Okay, I want to focus on ponies first before moving on to Disney. The thing is, with this one, we got two new characters and they're sisters, by the way. Like, wow, we they didn't say that in the episode, but... No, but they hint at it. They hint at it because they are wearing the costumes made for Luna, uh, based on Luna and Celestia. They have similar similar styles. And I think it was intentional that they made it like, yeah, one of them is supposed to be, t- to be Celestia and the other, one, the other one is supposed to be Luna. The other thing is, Amy put it in the draft. And said that they were sisters, or implied they were sisters, but in the final cut, it wasn't implied. They were just like close friends or one very hyper stranger person hugging a random person. So it didn't seem that way, but they're sisters, so yay. And could you believe it? People are already shipping them. It's fandom rule. (laughs) It's fandom rule. You have two sisters, you have to put them together. No, you... Oh, God. Yes, you do. Look at all the princesses. And look at all the twinses. No, no, no. I'm just remembering something. Yes, some... yes, yes, yes. Listen, this I have to finish. I remember something that <laughs> my friend... My friend is a big fan of Frozen. And he loves the Frozen shipping. The two, Anna and Elsa. I always question the fact that... Aren't they... Re- aren't they sisters? Like, what? That bothered me a bit. But you know what? Seguing on from that, we go to Disney. Remember how we wanted to talk about Disney? Not really, but what do you want to talk about Disney? Maybe Keith Rogers, probably writing for Star Wars or any Marvel show. 
Yeah, we were talking about that before you decided to derail the show doing something silly. As per usual, that's what happens when you grow old, kids. Don't turn into Norman. Hey, that's not um, true. But anyway, <laughs> this is going to be fun. Who knows? Personally, with the new shows that Disney is putting out there and they are putting together, and they have this weird thing going on, is that they allow directors that are known for doing animation to do live action. Like, uh, if you remember Brad Bird, he is the guy who directed Iron Giant and Ratatouille. Mm -hmm. He went on to make to, to make Tomorrowland. Oh. Now, okay, Tomorrowland didn't really work. I mean, not many people watched it. Not many people liked it. Uh, but, hey, A for effort and all that. So, why not try to give Amy Gideon Rogers a writing job to work on, who knows, that new Star Wars Rebels that is coming out? Like, something more for the grown-ups. Something a bit more mature. What I am very happy of is that we are having an entire season of, of MLP with all the original writers from season one before we move on to the, uh, to, before they move on to, to the future and better things. Mm, true that, true and, that. Hey, ending in Disney, it's kind of like the best result of after working with Hasbro. Let's see how it compares. Let's see how it compares. And, well, talking about episodes, like, remember last week's episode, the one with the, Wonderbolt one, um, Rarity Noir. You're talking about why Rainbow Dash keeps wanting to join this group of jerks, the episode. <laughs> um, I, I see it more as, look at this episode where there's smooth saxophone sounds. It's so smooth. Look at my horse. My horse is a... Sorry, you reminded me with the whole look at this episode. Oh, you. Look at this horse. Now back at me. Look at this horse. Then back to me. I am not that horse. He has amazing hair. <laughs> Oh, you. But yeah, that episode was fun. And Big Jim Miller on Twitter just mentioned something. I wonder if Wind Rider will team up with fellow Wonderbolt failure, Lightning Dust, to form the anti Wonderbolts. Hashtag MLP Season 5. So, this is interesting. You know, the season finale, I watched the, 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 the animatic that was premiered at the San Diego Comic Con and all that. I, and I think I kind of know where they are, they are end up going. They'll end up going with that. I think it's not just a hint. He just revealed one of the things that's going to happen on the season 5 finale. I don't know what to say. Because right now, where Lightning Dust is, she just appeared in the recent MLP comic. Issue number 33, was it? Are you kidding? Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, I haven't read that one yet, Norman. It's the one where, where it's the, the fall of the Crystal Empire. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. She just appeared there. Yeah, I there. haven't read that. Haven't read that one yet. Don't, do, don't you dare. No, I'm not spoiling, but she just appeared there. So now we know that she is there. Now we need to see where they bring it from that point on. With that in mind, will they even bring it up? Will they even bring up what happened in the comic? Because this is going to be interesting. Probably not. They're not going to. Remember that uh, comic canon and show canon are different. Barely, I know. They don't meddle at all. The comics are more within movie canon than other the other way around because the comics, they do mention things that happen both in the show and in the movies, but the show never even brings up anything that happened on the on the comics at all. And the movie, apparently. <laughs> and the, yeah, and the movie. They don't, they don't talk about the, uh, the vibrating journal. They don't talk about, uh, going to another dimension. They don't even mention Sunset Shimmer at all. Well, there's no reason to, so I'm, I'm still hoping that the series is in line with the movie, so that's what I'm hoping for right now. But other than that, other than that, I do want to see what Lightning Dust is doing, because if he is going to be teaming up with Wind Rider, this is going to be something cool. There are some fun theories and none of them are safe for work, but eh. No, not going there, not going there. But hey, at least we get to see more of Lightning Dust. Did you want to see more of her? No. Really? No? Talking about Lightning Dust is kind of like exhausting for me. Talking about that episode is exhausting for me. That is one of the worst episodes I have seen in this show. Really? Even... One of the absolute wars. Even yes. worse than Iron Will? No. No, okay. When it comes to, like, if I had to make a top five, that episode might be there. Maybe not. But if I had to do a top ten worst episodes of MLP, yes, that episode will easily be in that list. Just and only because it doesn't feel like a complete episode. Something is missing. Lightning does never finish his char her character arc. She didn't 
complete her purpose. Her purpose was to be Rainbow Dash's uh, opposite. Yeah, okay, good. What else do you have uh, besides that? Nothing. She's just a tool. You could have used just a mirror. It could have had the exact same impact. And besides, that episode feels a lot like faffing about doing things and not actually getting anything done. Plus, the Wonder Bolts uh, proved to be really, really in- irresponsible because they have this, uh, this one character that is insubordinate, that is cocky, thinks on herself and not the rest, and just doesn't really, doesn't really work for the group. That, I don't think the military supports that kind of attitude. In fact, I think that the military kind of punishes that kind of attitude. That's and true. the person out. Supporting and fueling that personality doesn't help. Yeah, honestly, I got no idea what to say, but, yeah, well, at least it's a character that we might see again. Well, some of us like her, Not excited. Some of us, Not looking for Some one. of us are. Some of us are. Are you? Personally, I'm 50-50 on her. Like, she's nothing exciting. But if she comes back again, that'll be fun. Because, well, you, you mentioned that she's the mirror of Rainbow Dash. And it reminded me of Amending Fences. That one is just a... Who was it? A Moon Dancer was just a mirror of Moon Twilight. Da- Moon, yeah, Moon Dancer was a mirror of Twilight. And, Sass, and Sassy Saddle was a mirror of Rarity. And if we continue like that, in season four, we had more moment, more, more uh, episodes where the characters had their own counterparts. Like the way that Sully Polomer was a mirror for Rarity, mm-hmm. or the way that the Wonder Balls were a mirror for Rainbow. They always, they always put Rainbow Dash against the Wonder Balls. It's like they want to re- destroy that hero image that, that she has of them. It's just, uh, but uh, here's the thing those episodes are well written and they use the characters properly and it feels like the characters have another thing to do besides what they have to do for the episode like they have a life outside of it True that. same goes with Moon Dancer in Amending Fences she feels more like a real character and a real character that is dealing with her own issues Lightning Dust is just a jerk she mm. is a one dimensional character that has no character arc whatsoever She's a jerk when the episode starts, and she's a sad jerk when the episode ends. The episode ends halfway through her character arc. Yeah, I don't know what to say about that one, because it's been a while since I watched it. I remember a few scenes here and there, and, well, it's hard for me to say anything about it. Then it'll be a review show, but I seem to remember I like it. But I can't say anything much about Lightning Dust. All I can say is I want to see her again. It'll be fun. But anyway, with that, that's the news for this week, guys. It's a bit, well, short, but what can we do? We don't have a guess. Say, you say short while I have been blathering like an idiot for the past 15, min- 15 hours. That, well, that's that's how long it's been. It's been 15 hours. But, uh, oh, no, wait a minute. It's been an hour and something. God, it feels long when I'm talking. Um, <laughs> well, James, once this edited, is probably going to be under 40 minutes. Oh, uh, no, and then all my... <laughs> Voices are gonna be changed, are gonna be replaced with, uh, chicken sounds or like turkey sounds. Probably. <laughs> and I'm just sitting here taking notes. I have never thought of episodes the way you like describe them right now. I never thought of them that way. Well, Ru, you should be more proactive. Join in. You're welcome. I am trying, but there's so much going on and I want to be part of every single action that's around me. Uh, I'm afraid I can't. I gotta choose. <laughs> you're not all that active if you're only taking notes, man. You have to participate. But anyway, that's besides the point. And if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at mbsshowgmail.com. You can reach us on Twitter. The show's Twitter account is at mbsshow. SweetieBot will retweet and interact with you. Somehow, I'm not 100% sure. And as for me, you can reach me at Norman Sanzo. I tweet about toys, food, and whatever tickles my fancy. And currently tickling my fancy is Battle for Zendikar. It's out. I'm going to go play pre-release, so it's going to be fun. Yay! By the time this episode comes out, I'll already be back home, counting my cards. And James, what about you, man? Don't you think they have enough of me for today's episode? Move on to the next person. Well, if you don't want to promote yourself, I don't mind. Nah, it's fine. No, I don't worry. I uh, No, I, I, don't, I don't want to take the spotlight. More than I already have. I already derailed your episode several times. I don't want to do that 
anymore. If you say so, man. If you say so. Ro, what about you, man? They can find me on my Twitter at Relicious underscore Art. I tweet about web comics, random thoughts, and other nonsense. Or my Deviant Gallery, Relicious.DeviantArt.com. All right. And also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio. And also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PunivaLife.com. Links will be in the show notes. So, I have been Norman Sanzo. I have been a Spanish person. I am Relicious Rhymes with Delicious. And we'll see you guys next week. And we'll see you on the next podcast. Goodbye. Bye-bye. We will fight for an identity. It's okay. Uh, we need to find a better ending than that. <laughs> yes, we need. It's starting to get annoying.